Hey, how we doing, folks? I'm here with you. And, of course, my name is Keith the Entrepreneur, which means I'm involved in a whole lot of things. I have my hands over there, my hands over here, and I'm not trying to collaborate and kind of, you know, kind of monetize and kind of, you know, uh, 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 kind of hone things in together in a nice, sweet pot, as it would say, and make it all work, right? So we hear something really exciting, and it's uh, going to be a brand new season, and it's going to be called Christian and Sex. Yes, the famous three-letter word that so many people are afraid of saying or using, even now in 2019. Why, I don't know. But it is what it is, y'all. But we're going to talk about sex. And uh, there's so much involved in this topic because when you think of sex, I think of sexuality. We have the male sex, we have the female sex, and we have it also in the, in the animal kingdom. So it's, it's also, it's a behavior, it's a persona, it's a personality, it's just who you are as a being. So not those two parts coming together. It's much bigger than that, y'all. So we're going to open our minds, we're going to expand our thoughts and our horizon and get ready for something new and fresh. So as I'm here, I'm going to introduce to you my partner, not in crime, y'all, but my partner, Coach Raquel Reese. Welcome, y'all. Clap, give her a hand, y'all. Give her a hand, give her a hand. <laughs> it's my absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So, so coach, we are about to embark on this new, 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 um, this interesting, uh, 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 um, I will say show. Yeah, and, I love, uh, I love the think? name of the show, Christians and Sex. Oh. I like it. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, you know, it's, it's funny very because. Uh, to say yeah. the name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Normally, I grew up in church, mm -hmm. and you, 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 didn't, you didn't hear church and. Sex. And church and sex wasn't synonymous. Right, you know? that's true. He, 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 it was very, really... Sex was very tabooed. Well, yes, um, still, tabooed. it still is. There's still some persons who's very about it, you know? Yeah, so yeah. you hear about Moses and you hear about David and Daniel and mm -hmm. Paul and Elias and, yes. and Zephaniah and Hezekiah. As, and, as a and matter of fact, of in, in, in the Bible reading, I, I, today I was reading Genesis, I think it's 19, um, where Lot's daughters went in on him and their whole idea was to save his, his um, lineage, right? Mm. So they went in, because after, you know, they were asked to leave Sodom and Gomorrah and they left, their husband stayed. So it was just the father and, the two, and the, his two daughters. And so the older yes. one instigated at that, you know, we need to get him drunk, get in there and have sex mm -hmm. with him in order to produce children to continue his line, his lineage. Mm -hmm. So yes. sex is all over in the Bible. I don't know why we don't want to talk about it. I like talking about it. Do you like talking but, but you about know, it? <laughs> but you know, I think everyone either talks about it, think about it or doing it. But anyway, exactly. guys. Exactly. The thing is that <laughs> <laughs> Even the ones who don't want to talk about it are doing it because the children are coming. Yes, they are coming. <laughs> I'm sitting every other nine months. Right. But, um, but the thing is that as, as I look at the Bible, and when I used to read the Bible as a younger man, mm -hmm. I would see these words like he went into unto her. He went onto her or went yeah. into her. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Okay, he went into the room and then what happened, you know? I never got, I, it never came yeah. to me, it occurred to me that that it was actually sex. It was going to, oh, going wow. to, to claim her, you know? When we were younger, so, right? You know, like, what happened? Always, Magic. Yeah, you know, this <laughs> kind of dropped out of nowhere. Yes. So, uh, you know, it, the thing is that um, even today, I find that uh, uh, as a, someone who have, grew up in the who have grown up in the church and, you know, I've been married, of course, so, and I have kids, of course, so I've been through the whole process of what that is. And, and, and what's it designed for. Um, of course, you have the whole idea of how you're, you're taught to think about it before marriage mm -hmm. and, and how you have to conduct yourself. Um, but the idea of this show, and there's a goal to this show, is not just a talk. Right. It is hopefully an enlightenment, hopefully a way of how are we showing up 
Wow. Um, with our sexuality, you know, yes. always showing us um, with how we think about it, how we, mm. how, what how, we expect how we from it. it. Because I'm worked, and just to give the listeners some context as to why I'm here, I've worked in the Sexual Health Authority in Jamaica for four years, a little over four years. Mm. So I have some experience in that area, some information, some knowledge in that area. So, yeah. That's going to be helpful in this show, definitely. I'll, I'll be coming back for you if I own yes. more questions in here. It's a very, very useful topic. And, and, and as you say, you know, once we can expand our mind and get beyond that three-letter word, then we can really have some, some, some intentional conversations. Because I think um, it's not that it's not being done. It is being done. Yes. So, so just imagine if it's being done, but it's not being talked about. I think there are people, yes. for, for one, I think there are too many, and it's my personal opinion, but I think there are too many women in the church not having sex. Mm. Or maybe they are, but they're single, so I'm assuming they're not having sex, right? Um, mm. But... <laughs> So how do they deal with those emotions? How do because because it's real. Every month, women have what we call ovulation, and ovulation is when you get horny. So how do you deal with that? So it's not mm. as though we don't come in contact with it. It's also yes. said that women think about sex more than men, contrary to popular belief. Right. Well, no. Well, I find it hard to believe there's no, there's no <laughs> way. There is no. You gotta find me. You gotta show me that research. I've got to read that for myself. Let me, there it. Let no me pull it up for you. Let me. But well, that's well. that's what's been said. But in the meantime, I'm looking for it. I'll I'll tell you about it. But um, I I do think it's very useful to have such a such a, a show as this because just to really go in and talk about it and really have a serious questions. I believe that God is a smart businessman because what is it he wanted the earth populated and what did he do? He created sex and, and, and he created this, this product, commodity, activity, whatever you want to call it, that is so addictive and so desire, desired and desirous that he didn't have to ask us to do it. As a matter of a fact, people are begging us not to do it. People are being begged not to do it family planning yeah. and all of those things. So mm -hmm. why do we avoid mm -hmm. that? And if, and it's not that, I mean, we've been talking about the sex and the sex and the sex, but just so persons understand that we're not saying the sex is more important than the Christianity or that, or than being a Christian or being spiritual. But how do you, yes. can't the two marry? Can't, can't they marry in a conversation, in a wholesome conversation? I guess that's what, you know, this is about how do we and, 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 go ahead? I mean, you know, probably cut you, um, coach Raquel. But I realized that I've been to several of uh, I call it that marriage enrichment classes when I was married, and we talked a lot about you know, men see through blue glasses and women see through pink glasses or. Men are from Mars and women are from Venus, and and you talk about these different things, communication issues and money issues, but very little, if any at all, on that sex issue. And there are a lot of sex issue dysfunctionalism in marriage, whether it's just not enough, or it's too much, or it's not in, it's not temperate, it's over, it's overly done, or mm -hmm. it's abuse, or whatever it is, and. A lot of it is not talked about, and people are afraid to even talk about it because it's embarrassing. I mean, who wants to feel that? Why is it embarrassing? I guess. Why is it embarrassing? They're, they're, okay. It's embarrassing because it, it's something that I've not been talked about. So it, they, 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 the, the idea of people's reaction to it, if you are, if you seem to not either be aware or maybe you, you have some issue in that area, it's some of that mental, uh, mental issues where if you go to a counselor, you're crazy. You know, so people don't see psychology for help, for mental health. Mm -hmm. We think that you have to be some, some, some nuts to actually, you know, to really get the help that you need emotionally or mentally. So I think sometimes sex is put in that same category, probably even more, you know. But uh, this conversation is it, 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 it's also going to be expanded to other people. We're going to have a larger group here. 
men and women are going to dis- discuss also. You know, we just kind of set the stage, um, you know, because there are many different, I mean, ideas and, and thoughts on this issue, even the older folks, so the, the middle-aged folks and the young right. folks, um, how they react to it, how they think about it. I mean, there are a lot of lonely people in church. And, you know, there are people yeah. who are, that's the only area of their lives they wish was intact. They may have got money. They may have, you know, have their bills paid. And they may be a regular church goer mm-hmm. uh, along the Lord, but that area is not being met. And sometimes they want to have, a, they say they want to have a clean life. They don't want to ask them to compromise their, their body, you know, with maybe the wrong one or maybe even anyone because it's mm-hmm. the quote unquote big sin. You know, yeah. and so you have a lot of people. Like any of the sin. By the way, sorry, I checked it, and it's not the case uh-huh. anymore. But I remember there was a time when they used to have this yes. shows who think about it more. I mean, at the yes. time they were saying men did it more, but women thought mm-hmm. about it more. But apparently, that's not wow. anymore. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but it's it's interesting that you found that anyway. But but I always believe that men usually, I guess, we we were built, you know, hunters and. And and of course you, you make you mentioned something earlier that God made this. Actually, thing. I think women women so, women so, think about sex more, but that's just my personal opinion. Go ahead. I, I think God made. But but, <laughs> but but I think God had in mind to have us um procreate. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so therefore if if I, I think being married when I was married and the thing about the issue that come in come come with life, being married or in even in a relationship. If there was no sex involved, man. Because I was going to ask people, that. People, can, people a rela- that at all. can a relation survive without sex? And by sex, hmm. are we talking about just the intercourse or are we talking about kissing, foreplay, um, sexual activities, masturbation, um, caressing, canoodling? We're talking about all of that, right? Yes, because you know what, it's, it's, it's a great point because, you know, people at one point, and it's in, it's in my book that I'm actually working on, I talked about, um, I, I heard a segment on, on the radio, and it was the first time I heard about sexting or texting, you oh, know? I like to sext. Yeah, well, you know, confession. I used to, to like to sext. <laughs> I used to like to do. Change. I like to do. It's something I like. I'm, 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 I like sexuality. And I like expressing my sexuality. Wow. I but, know. But, that's a but, shocker, right? A, a lot of persons who don't know me would not know. Wow. It's because I'm single. <laughs> so they wouldn't know. Right. So. right. I got you. But, but the thing about it is that um, I, I learned that, you know, it's not just penis and vagina. It's no. really about a, how you relate to, to each other. How that... Yeah connection with the masculine and the feminine right how they, they, and, they and, it, and you know what it, it's wow. learning each other it's it's being yeah. comfortable with each other and it's teaching the other what you yeah. like and learning what the other likes so that when yes. you get together you know what to do yes and and it's also the anticipation of getting yes together, you know I, it's true i think i think i think people are people are afraid of being are being misjudged or judged if they if they seemingly are a bit open or seemingly a bit curious yeah. or you know and, and, and I think yeah. people so, are afraid of being bold about sex because there is uh it's like once you start being bold about it then people start thinking you're a whore or yeah, you're right. overdoing I'm, it. I remember yeah. we're having a conversation and I think I don't, I'm not sure if we're going to reference it, but we're having a conversation and I remember I was there talking about it and I was saying, no, I don't like to do with, with, with I don't like to withhold from my husband. And I was talking about sex and things like that. And I remember the oohs and ahs and like, oh my goodness, whoa, like the shock, the, um, and I remember coming off that interview and being contacted and um, mm-hmm. someone said to me, I didn't know you were so sexual. I didn't know, no, not sexual. Like I didn't know you were so sexually active is what the person said. And then I remember asking at what exactly, what was the line that I stated, that I said, that gave you that impression that I was very highly wow. sexually active. And he said, well, you were talking about it. And I said, but what was the line? When did I, what did I say exactly that um, 
illustrated to you that that was the case. And he had to really stop and think, you know, funny, you never said. Mm. See, at which point I was actually celibate and had been for more than five years. See? Mm. Right. Wow. But it's, I think that's the fear that a lot of people have, that I don't have anyway, mm. um, where yeah. you talk about a, matter, a, a topic, the topic of sex, because I can come yeah. on here and talk about murder all I like. Nobody asks mm-hmm. me or even thinks I'm a murderer. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they probably think I'm not a murderer because I'm talking about it. <laughs> See? No, but, something, you made it it's important because mm-hmm. I remember I, I approached, uh, there were two brothers in my church, and I approached, you know, saying, you know, hi, what's up, hello. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I said, man, you know, I, I think, I forgot what, what took it at this point, but I said, listen, I'm enjoying my single life. Right. And so one of the brothers alluded to say, well, oh, like, you know, some statement about some sexual thing I'm, I must be doing because I'm enjoying my single life. So I said to him, why can't I enjoy my single life just being single? I don't do I mean, have to be there. Exactly. So it's, it's, amazing. it's amazing how... how <laughs> and, and what if you're doing it because you're doing something as well? So what? You know, right. what if so you were what, doing it or what if you exactly. weren't doing it? Why is it mm-hmm. such a big deal? Why do you think it's such a big deal? You, you know what? I, you know, that's, you know, I question that many times. I because, think it's because people want to you know do it. They're probably doing it, but they, they feel they can't talk about it. So the curiosity is there. So I feel like when they hear you talk about it, it stimulates them because yes. they want to talk about it. But it's like being, a, being in a class and you, you want to ask a question about something that you're curious about. That's yeah. really, you ask about it and put your hand up about it. They're going to remember that you're the one that asked. And then people are going to say you're the one that asked, but everybody wants to ask. <laughs> right? Everyone wants to answer, but nobody wants to be, yeah. nobody wants to bear the shame of asking. Yes. So I think that's, the, that's what entices, that, that's why people really want to talk. They want to hear. They want to hear mm-hmm. it. They want to know it's being discussed. They just don't want to be the first to put their hand up. They don't want to be the face of the conversation. Yes. Yes, folks, here we, yeah, yeah, we're talking about Christian and sex. Yeah, we are talking about Christian and sex, guys. But the, the thing is that, um, as you mentioned, as you mentioned that, um, I think it, a big part of this is learned behavior. And we learn so much thing that we don't even realize. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the culture of this thing is and so myths, strong. Myths. I mean, I myths. grew up in a church where I didn't see... Anybody, I wonder how did kids come about because wow, you didn't see hands holding, you didn't see the hugging, or I mean, all the time you see it is in a wedding where it's like there's barely force, yeah. like okay, give us something, give us something that would not tear. Okay, oh, we got one, okay, give us yeah. another one, please. Give it. <laughs> you know? And and when it's a kiss, go, <laughs> yes, and I don't remember being to a wedding, an old fashioned wedding where they kiss without the thing went on, yeah, it's like they, they naturally just two of them there sitting and kissing. Yeah. It's like, okay, now we're going to knock the wine glasses and be saying we want to hear you kiss. Yeah. And that was a cult, like, with a cultural thing that we yeah. want to do at a certain time. Yeah. So you were learning these things yeah. almost subconsciously. Yeah. It's amazing. It, so, it, so it think, is amazing because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, um, I often wonder because this is my view. I think there's nothing. There's no man sexier, hotter than a man of God. That's what I think. Oh, no, no, now we're talking. <laughs> That's what I think, right? I think a man of God who knows his your Bible, who knows his God, who, who you know, know how to do that and knows how to put it down in the bedroom and knows how to be romantic, there is none sexier than that. That's what I think. I don't know if you've ever watched this movie, um, The Scarlet Letter. Have you ever watched that movie? I have no, but I've heard about it. Listen, you've got to watch it, and, and you've got I'll, to play the clip on I'll, this I'll, show. I'll check it out now. Maybe so I'll try she to find was, it, it There was a scene where she was heading, they were, she was on her way to church because the pastor had invited her to church. She, well, let me tell you how it started. She went ahead of her husband to this place, right? That um, mm-hmm. that was very religious, highly religious, and in the back in those days, it was unheard mm-hmm. of to see um, a woman who is single living by herself because then you wouldn't be yeah. safe, right? And then to yes. know that she was married and she came there, her husband sent her ahead of him, and then on the land where that she purchased, there was a lake and or a river, and the pastor 
came over and he was having a bath there. Because in those days, the bath was mm-hmm. going to the river. That was how you had oh, a bath. Okay. So oh. while he was there having his bath, mm-hmm. she was there peeking through the bushes because he didn't know she was there. But then Watching he was that. on her property and I wouldn't have moved either. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. So she saw him and everything and you saw everything. So, you know, she saw his penis and whatever. Really cute too. <laughs> so, Uh-oh. He invited her to church, right? The conversation led to him inviting her to church. She was on her way to church and they met. So this was when they mm-hmm. touched for the first time, like as in had a physical encounter other than a close physical encounter. Because her, mm-hmm. her, her cart, her, her, because it's the horses in those days and her cart was stuck mm-hmm. in the mud. So he helped her and then she rode on the horse with him. Back in those days, again, that would not have happened, you know, so he was just like taken by it, like, oh, okay. Here's this woman just bold, doing her thing. She doesn't care. She's not riding side side saddle. She is riding the horse. And, you know, she's ahead of, like, she's there with him neck to neck, you know? And you Mm -hmm. can see where he was attracted to it. And then when he went, no, because she didn't know he was the past, the minister. Mm -hmm. Right? So when she's there sitting in church and he came, and I'm telling you, it was the most powerful sermon he ever ever delivered. (laughs) And I mean, you could, you knew, you could, Feel the impact she had on him. Of course, they later had sex. She had a baby. She was married. All of that happened. It was very, uh, one of my fa- my favorite movies, right? I think I think the lessons are so important for us to learn, you know. And um, yes. it's just the way how the whole sexual energy when he infused that into ministry. I mean, the whole church just rocked. You know what I mean? So I think it is very healthy. Mm. Even if the pastor is single, that conversation must be had. Because for me, I I have this little thing that if a man is single and he's of a certain age, he's over, let me say 30, 35, and he's a Christian or he's a man of God and he's not married, I have questions. You know, I'm not going to accuse. Yes. He's never been married. He's never been um, out with a, a, a partner to say, have even had girlfriends or whatever. You've been single all your life. Nobody has, has ever seen. What's, and and you do, I do know you have the, the virgin sometimes who, because they're a virgin, it's even harder for them to connect and things. But it does, it, my mind wonders. I kind of yeah. get yeah. fearful. You know, because, mm. and I'm not saying that single men who are virgins or single men who are not having sex are pedophiles, but mm. there are, when it comes to sex, there are also sexual crimes. Mm. And I'm not an expert on it, but I'm just saying on the cause, I'm not an expert on the causes of why someone becomes a pedophile, but mindfulness, mm-hmm. mindfulness, you know what I mean? And the importance of sex, because what, what I'm saying is what a man it is said, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, wakes up with a hard on every day. And if he doesn't wake up every day, maybe something is wrong. But almost every day, right? Pretty much. Right. I know, you know, you go Pretty to much. pee and stuff like that. But if you've never been married, and, and I'm just saying, the fact that he wakes up with one me, means that he is conscious that he's a sexual being. A woman, if she never has it any at all, she has it every month when she's ovulating. Mm. So what I'm saying that to say we're all conscious that we're sexual. So it's not something we can just pretend like isn't. So why don't it's we? It's not there, exactly. Right, so why aren't we talking about it? You, 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 know, you know, Raquel, I just say that. Um, my current pastor, Pastor Dean, mm-hmm. um, I think he's a, he's a fantastic, uh, aggressive man. And he's very transparent about his, you know, his sexuality, to a point where he's, he's very aware that he has a mixed audience, you know, and there are people who still yes. have not gone to reach that level. But he's, he's, but he, he's very, uh, he can be very deliberate in how he delivers. Nice, I like uh, it. From personal life. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, which I like, he said it several times, he said, when he was getting married, and the day, you know, of, you know, the fanfare and the wedding and the dinner, he said at some point, all he wanted to see was his wife outside of the dress. Aww, That's all he wanted to see. I like that. To get, to get his wife outside of the wedding dress, right? Now, that's, that's typical, right? 
but but I like that. But you know, the the the, the flip side to all of this, as far as we mentioned, sex. Sex is supposed to be joyful, to be exciting, yes. to anticipate, to look forward to. But mm-hmm. as we're speaking now, there are many women who see pain. True. When you sex. For a long time, that was they, my experience. Be, because many women, and sadly, because a lot of men don't know how to make love to a woman. They, yeah, they've actually they've actually distorted what sex was supposed to be. It, that um, was, I experienced that growing up. Yeah, and 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 not necessarily rape. Rape is, a, rape is a whole different category. Yeah. But we're talking about that's, that's the way the insensitivity. Mm, yeah, and, and uh, I'm not even talking about rape either. I'm talking about be with yes. someone and not experiencing the pleasures of the activity. The connection of what, yeah, and, and yeah. It, it is sad. It, it is sad. So, so we want to speak to that, also, that, that audience as well because you might be listening too and you may see this conversation as a painful one in your memory. But the thing about that I will, will, will actually go back to is when I say Christian and sex, the Christian part of it is attached to a God who cares about us. Mm, and, and he created us. Who created, who created us. And who created, created our bodies. And he does definitely want to make us whole, not only, finan- not only uh, one in one area, but our financial success, our mental success, our sexual success. Mm-hmm. He wants all of that to be, to be whole. It's funny because the, 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 the ten leper that, that Christ met, and when he told him to go and show himself to the priest, and on the way, they were cleansed of their leper. One came back and gave thanks to him, and he was made whole. He was telling me that his entire structure was now revolutionized. Whether it was family, his, whether it was a job, whether it was, you know, he was, he was made whole. So it was already healed, but what's he made, making whole for? Mm-hmm. So we, we have a lot of people who, who, um, who look at sex, and they said, my, my money's good. My church is good. Mm-hmm. My kids are good. But it's right here. Not so you good. Know, not good. I can share and an experience is- with you that I had where um, I had a, 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 I thought it was a sickness, really. I had an, a, 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 an issue of dryness that I always had. Like, I remember going to the doctor's like condom would literally shred inside of me, like just go to shreds. That's how dry I would be. And it's not mm. until at age 38 that I understood that I would, I would hear my friends talk about, you know, you're supposed to be like lubricated, right? And then when mm. I worked in that environment, cause I never really worked in the environment. When I worked in the sexual health authority, it wasn't necessarily, that I was communications. So I had mm-hmm. access to the information. Um, but I would hear them say, no, you know, I get wet and stuff like that. I didn't know what that was because I was just like, I just used to think, you just don't have control over yourself, do you? <laughs> you know, maybe that's why. Because I used to think, if I'm, well, not used to think, but like if I'm dating you, I, I decide I'm going to date you now and I decide when I'm finished. Mm. But then at age 38 was when I realized, oh, oh, no, 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 no. There's actually other experiences where the person doesn't even have to touch you. And it can actually mm. happen. I never knew that could happen. You know, mm. I didn't know I could have a conversation with a guy and have an orgasm. I didn't know what that was. Wow, that's, that's interesting. I had no idea. See, so I'm giving you a little, I'm giving you a little juice for your show. Because <laughs> I don't talk about my personal life like that. Say more, say more. <laughs> but if, it may, if wow. someone else may be experiencing this since I went through it, because I just didn't know what I was missing out on right and i was very bold very open i always talk about it you know but it wasn't until this year that i i i learned so much about my body and that my 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 mind is so connected with my body so as you spoke yeah. about mental health um that mind is connected to your body it's it's what was happening to me is that my mind wasn't in it mm. you know and and contrary to a person's thought I wasn't highly sexual at all, you know, because I was very driven career because I, I wanted to be married before all of that. But then, you know, you, you, you go through life and you, it sometimes it takes you a very long time to meet someone, but it's taking me a very long time to meet the one. (laughs) So, you know, things happen and I have absolutely no regrets. Hmm? So so question, you don't mind me asking. Sure. Um, 
how much would you would you recommend mm -hmm. a woman in, in this case to to see a, a therapist if they if they highly. they have an issue highly. feeling a certain way? highly because sometimes I think people are looking for the man or the image to make them something. feel wow yes. when mentally then you actually do mentally, some fixing. So I remember I remember the first guy I dated. Mm -hmm. Well, not the first guy I dated. The first guy I was um, sexual with, um, I wasn't really into it. But the friendship that we had, I valued so much that I did. And I remember him saying to me, I can't be with you because I don't want to become a rapist. And that's what I feel like. Well, that was pretty honest and blunt. Oh, yes. Wow. We're, we're really good friends. We're still really good friends. And he's happily married. <laughs> and I won't say his name and stuff. But that's where my that's mind good. was. That's where my mind was. And um, even the second person I dated, um, it was, well, this one, I had a, a, a long distance. I've always had long distance relationships <laughs> for fear of having a, yes, a close distance one. And um, I remember we would, the, the beauty about that was that he lived so far away, he was in the UK, that he could only come here once or twice a year. So that worked for me. Okay. And then mm. <laughs> my body used to have a very interesting interaction with reaction where he would come and it's that time of the month for me. <laughs> it, was mm. just, it was horrible. It, it was. Ain't God good. I said, you know, I'm going to down. I'm going to shut this so down because I'm uh, surprised that he had two children while we were together. Uh -huh. The third guy I dated, I knew him for a very, very long time. I was very comfortable and we're going to try to date. But then we couldn't get past the part where he's, he's, he's a Christian, of course. And he mm. did not know how to kiss me passionately. And I couldn't get mm. beyond that. Wow. I just could wow. not get. He only knew how to do this. Lovely uh -huh. guy, very successful guy. If if I were to say who it was, people would be like, "Oh, really?" Because I mean, he's he's mm -hmm. a, a, like a bachelor that is sought after. You know what I mean? Because he is wow. he's a celebrity. He is a, a Caribbean celebrity. He is highly successful, and you just wouldn't know because he's gorgeous. So you you wouldn't even be thinking. You know, but his religion is, I'm telling you, you met some amazing men and you may meet them in the boardroom or something and you're thinking, oh yes, he's hot, he's nice, he's this, he's that. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. sometimes you even wonder, how is that man with that woman? Let me tell you something. It's connection. Mm. It's real connection. Yes. It's real purpose. It's, it's, there's something that brought them together because mm -hmm. it's more than just what someone looked like on the outside. Yes, it you is. You know, because sometimes we just get so yeah. stuck on that. It's more than what is in the brain. And none of them, and these were, I remember the guy that I was in that, he was gorgeous. Like this guy that everybody would be thinking, like, you know, he was very wild too. So he was highly, you, you'd think that he, I would have think that he would have, if nobody connected me with, with me, he would have. Never did. Wow. Wow. And interestingly, I connected with someone who I had never been in physical contact with. Conversations. Interesting. Period. Yes. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, some of my deepest, my deepest connection came through communication. Yeah. So we limited time we spent together uh, physically, mm -hmm. but communication wise, it was like wow. Yeah. And 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 and, and so it, it's funny. A lot of people, you know, they don't talk about this thing. And we need to it. talk about it because and we need to. Yeah. Because. Again, 38, I've gone through a lot. I've even studied relationships at one point in time. Nothing prepared me for what would have happened, what would have happened to me in 2019. I mean, nothing prepared me for this. I had no idea that I could actually, quote, unquote, fall in love. Like, I used to hear it, and I love romantic romances and stuff like that, but I figured it was something we decide to do. Yes. I didn't think it was something I have no control over. It's a problem mm -hmm. for me. You know <laughs> you know, I mean? Like, No. You're going to control so, this thing. Yeah. You know, so, so but folks, there is such so a thing as emotions. And if you don't deal with those chemicals, then you yeah. mistake them for something else if you're not careful. Yes, you will. Because sometimes yes, they come will. with a real thing and sometimes they come with something that's not so real. True. But if you don't know about it and if you're not aware of those, how those chemicals can make you feel, you mm. will go thinking, oh, wow, I'm so and so and so and, and you know, but it has to be more than that that makes it love and in love and or or makes it worth a relationship yes 
So yes. here we see So folks, folks, here we are on Christian so, and Sex, y'all. <laughs> and we're talking about the title Christian and Sex. And and listen, guys, I hope that you 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 send your emails in. You will you will you will check in and give us your feedback and all the good stuff because we want to know what you're thinking as well. But you know, as 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 Coach Record was saying, um, talking about the connection here. You know, I have some stories, but I guess as the segments go further on, I'll give you a little sneak peek um, preview at uh, at some stuff. You know, I'm no saint, but I'm, I'm not devil, okay? I've been a good boy, pretty much. But I got, I got some stories here and there, you know, that may be exciting to you to hear. But um, I'm going to give you one story I had. And there was a young lady that I, I, I thought was very interesting. It was Spanish, but it was so Spanish. And I've always said, I wonder what it would be like to date a Spanish girl. I mean... I did like the language. I wanted to learn the language. But I, but I also, for years, I wondered, what would it be like to date a Spanish girl? And there was a girl and to like me, which I was surprised. That she, that's, this girl did like me. And I'm there anticipating this thing. I'm trying to slowly see how it would work out. This is many years ago. And, um, and for some reason or the other, we end up in the same space. Hallelujah. The same time. Hallelujah. Anyway. <laughs> I like that. But, but anyhow, anyhow, we we kissed, and it was a disaster, y'all. It was a disaster. <laughs> I was like, what happened? Wow. I mean, after this anticipation and this, you know, this yeah. build, I'm like, I'm like, no. I so think you, the you kiss kinda, is wrong. Everything else is wrong for me, anyway. So, the kiss has yeah. got to be right. So, so I learned that you know, you know, in, in the future, God forbid. I'm gonna make sure I have some mint in there, something, whatever it is, and just be make sure ah, these, I'm not the part, the fault, you know. So hold on, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Why was the kiss it, bad? <laughs> I, I thought it why. was passion, it lacked passion and connection, and that's not it. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was passion or connection, but I know that you know, it's like sometimes it could be a um, I don't know. If, I didn't smell the person's breath before, but I don't know if it's just the way it, it felt, the, the, the taste of the connection. It was more like, like stifling the way it came across. I don't know if it was the, I don't know if it was the, the combination of mine, her breath, or just, I don't know what it was, but it just didn't connect. Interesting. And I could tell, I could tell because I've had connection. I mean, even being, being married, my wife, my, 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 my wife at the time, we, it was, I had awesome kisses, you know? Wow, nice. Um, but the thing is that I just that mindset of pursuing. So while you, young lady, or you, gentleman, I'm looking at this person. I think she looks good and she looks ready and she looks built or he looks built. You better be careful what may look good and really yeah. find out that it's not what, it's, what, not what it is. You know, the Girl. passion, the heart, the, the connectivity. That is true. And I'll tell you <laughs> this, right? <laughs> um. My experience, I only can refer to oh. my experiences, <laughs> but um, the, when I, okay, let me say this right. <laughs> when I compare the guys I've dated to the person I fall in love with, I fell in love with, worlds apart when it comes to aesthetics, right? Worlds apart. Hmm? When it comes to look, if you were going by looks, I don't choose men by looks, right? Um, gotcha. And sometimes, you know, because you're a big girl, persons may assume what kind of man would be interested in you, right? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> people do that too. But discrimination, that's another thing to talk about. But I'll tell you something about big girls and the bedroom. You want that to have that when the time gets cold. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> I've heard that um, before <laughs> by, by okay. several men, yeah. When I compared, if you were, if you were to, and, and do not get me wrong, he's gorgeous, okay? I'm just saying if you were to just go based on, oh, that looks cute or that person's popular, you know, based on the, the, make, the physical makeup of the persons, I dated one guy who was mixed with Indian. For some reasons, I would have thought that he's very highly very romantic stuff. I, I, I was shocked that it, like, I was like, what's wrong with my brain? Like what's going on with my brain? You know? Mm. Um, 
that it just wasn't anyway but the person i met <laughs> well i didn't meet him in person or anything we just had one conversation and he said something to me and that whole thing just, it just changed everything but you mentioned something about kissing somebody and things like that that's the first person i ever kissed and it was completely magical and <laughs> funny because the first time we kissed he was actually sleeping i remember when, when he got up he was like i would need to like wash my mouth i didn't care it was the first time i've ever experienced that i'm saying mm. that to say um it could have been more than just whether or not you need mint because when you are attracted to someone or let me tell you what i think happened to me i think I love at first sight thing happened to me. Mm, it's not at okay. first sight because it happened before I saw him, really. But that's a whole other story, right? A whole but, other, not a book like that. <laughs> I do think those things happen where people connect through through their through their spirit spiritually. Ah, that's a point Basically, that we haven't talked about, do. but it, it's in, it's, yes. it's significant. It, it is. And I'm not just saying this for the sake of saying it, otherwise I would not say it. Right? And let's be clear, this person is not somebody I'm with or will be with. Okay? Um, but it was, he does music, and I fell in, with, in love with the music first. And I started writing about it. I, I fell in love with the person who did the music without knowing the person who did the music. Wow. That's, that's <laughs> fascinating. And, and it was the instrumentals. It's not words. Right? And I okay, said, I'm going to call psychologist. Let me call psychologist. Okay, I'm. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> and it wasn't, you know, like that. And then when we met, I still wasn't even thinking. It was nowhere near my mind. I mean, when it happened, it was just writing. It was in writing. It was after writing it out. I shared it with my friend. I'm like, what am I writing? You know, but I'm just hmm. saying, when it actually happened, it was the first time, you know, and it's so funny because. I remember one day I was sitting looking at this person, you know, they were just all messed up. They were cleaning and, you know, and for the first time I looked at someone and know that I love that person and it had nothing to do with presentation. It was nothing. And he could have been out in the farm digging something. And for the first time I was like, Oh my God. Wow. So that's what that is. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you do. It doesn't matter. Are you good? Are you okay? Um, do I need to support you in something? What do you want to do? I've got you. Yeah. I think a lot of times, I think that's missing because when you experience that, it's, 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 I think it's hard not to talk about it, not to share it. Wow. Mm. So it is my thinking and my belief that maybe a lot more persons are having the kind of experiences I was having. And sometimes maybe that's why they don't even talk about it because what's there to talk about? There's no, there's no, I'm talking about this because it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I'll always remember it. And, and I believe that even greater is coming because usually, you know, God will give you glimpses of things. And I think maybe God did that for me because I was so comfortable being alone. I was done. I, I was done dating. I was good. I could be alone. I made a deal with somebody that is just going to give me a baby and I'm good. I was, I was, I had no, mm. I was perfectly fine. I know I wasn't masturbating, but on the matter of masturbating, if I may share this, mm -hmm. what I learned, and I learned it, I think in 2015, that, well, <laughs> let me, maybe that's for another topic, another time. Go ahead. Yeah, the other time, you know, it's for the, uh, <laughs> I was the, going the, to say the, that the body can give itself an orgasm. That's what I was going to say, but we can yeah. discuss that another time. Yeah, that's that's interesting. But but you know you know without, it's without masturbation, without yes, any touching yes. any nothing, God yes, not make mistakes. Yes. Yeah. Wow, and, and and you know you know it, it's, it's 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 interesting how you said something about um about uh, connection connection again, mm -hmm. and it didn't matter whether a person whether they Brett was thinking or not. But I you know I did it on before. the toilet. I'll be there. No, I never updated, you updated. say that because I'm one of the most scornful persons you'll meet. <laughs> but I've dated, I've dated before, and I've no, I'm, I know it's like to pursue someone and pursue and pursue in the most delicate and the most thoughtful way possible to to have the person finally open that door and you realize that what was all that for? You know, you oh, kind wow. of wondered 
And then also, too, I, I've, I've also learned that, and, and maybe you might be experiencing this in your own life, in your own relationship, where someone is saying, oh, why are your nose so big? Or why is your ears, you know, and mm. you start to pick a little thing. They don't I love you. They don't, they, they're not, because they're not, they're not loving you. When right. you love someone, you don't see, you, you really don't see yeah, those things. That's true. Um, and I had to learn that. Um, but, but you mentioned something about, about a spiritual connection that, that I think is so important. And I believe now in my life, um, at my age, that, that when I see that woman, she's going to know, and I'm going to know that, yes. Yeah, that's what I believe too. Because you see, you really can also have the connection I'm talking about, as in what happened with me, where you can yeah. have that connection and you're the only one having it. Or yeah. the, the person may have some degree of it, but it's not the same yes. thing or it's not the same time or whatever. And it is just my belief and I, mm -hmm. I, I could be wrong. But for me personally, yeah. um, I just feel if, 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 it do, if it's not mute, I think initially it was mutual. And mm -hmm. then I think the person kind of recollected himself and was like, what, are, what am I doing? I'm not ready for this yet. I think nothing is wrong with that. I think that is just when you know that this isn't it. Wow. That's just for me. That's just what I think. You know, because I believe, like you said, I think when it's right, you know. And if you yeah. have to question it, it isn't. That's just my view. You, you know, as you, as you mentioned about, about that, and I do concur with you, we, we think about business, a, a business relationship. Yeah. All right? And it, 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 there's friction involved. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a level of communication that's involved, mm -hmm. a level of smoothness involved. Yes. Um, flexibility that's involved. And of course, this applies also with our sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought about the people who have, it's like the way they work together is like, it's almost like it's sex. It's not sex, but it's such a yeah. dynamic experience. You know, this, these persons are really, are attentive yeah. to the, the goal of the, of the, of the business. You yeah. know, they show up on time, they call, they yeah. respond. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and so that's why I think that people, you know, it's all connected. Our spirituality, our sexuality is all connected. And that's Which why I say relationships all? are relationships. Yeah. I don't know yeah. why we separate intimate relationships from rel relationships because yeah, how you so treat connected. one, you ought to treat the other. Yeah. They just yes. have different it, features. Yes, it's, it's kind of funny because many years ago, people said, well, the way somebody, someone acts when they're not in the spirit, you know, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. if they're contangorous, yeah. in the flesh. <laughs> they, they're contangorous in the ground, spirit. It's the same way. <laughs> so I said, I said, that makes so much sense, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's almost like, um, so, so I realized that a topic as such, there's so many dynamics and elements to it. Um, what is what are we talking about? Um, people don't have it anymore. Maybe some people want it, but one don't want because of age. What are we talking about? People are young. People are curious about it and not sure how to go about it. There was a survey. Um, they did a survey the other day. It was on the reel. I think I heard it. I think it was. I, I don't remember the statistic, but I think it was fifty something percent. But don't quote me on that. Check it out yourself where I think it was like 50 something percent of young mm -hmm. people are not having sex. Yes. And, 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 and they would have to believe it's more. Yeah. They, they have and that's more. a problem, that's people. That's a problem. Um, and, and, and some people, some folks feel it's not basically be because of how they're looking at it. Right mm -hmm. now, but also I, because I, they're, and, and it's also happening because people are sexting because they say people are protecting their heart. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so, I, you know, so that's a great point because yeah. the areas. Because for are, me, I, I, I. Go ahead. Sorry. You touch, a very, you touch something very, 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 mm -hmm. very key. Because most time, even in church setting, when people think of young people not, to, not, not supposed to have sex, they're thinking. Doesn't mean they're not being sexy at all. Exactly. Oh, exactly. So, so there's so much ways now. Yes. You don't, have, you don't have to meet in person. Yes. And I've always I mean, had long with those relationships. So when you're ready for that conversation, I can, I can tell you a thing or two. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and a lot of games that they have now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, and sometimes that is giving distorted um, views and the pornographic 
distorted yes. views and expectations of sexuality. Yes. You know? so the, so, the, 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 that's not even as well. I remember at one point have... in time. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I remember at one yeah, point sorry. in time. We, oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So we keep, we keep going back and forth, right? But, but I was point, saying that that's, oh. that's not an area where I think that that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I mean, I expect to get a lot this of feedback. This is a serious topic, this, you know. This, segment here this because is a serious I've topic. Learned, yeah, I've had some very bad, distorted ideas as a young man, what it is. Wow by people who just didn't have the right idea or didn't yeah and then some boys to, see the porn and they expect mm -hmm. the woman in real life to be that yeah. not recognizing that that isn't even real yeah, i'm telling you it's not even That's real like, and we story. have this whole oh, manufactured okay. world like people now are literally carving their bodies doing certain mm -hmm. things and you get into those relationships like i've had a friend who did and you don't know what the person is doing to maintain that that curvaceousness and then you get yes. married to this wonderful beautiful curvy woman or slim or, or whatever woman and then you get to learn how she maintains her body and you can't live with it yes and then and then how about this like how about people women who probably who have maybe kept themselves you know they're pretty much done the right thing you know if anything very mildly mm -hmm. now this wild guy who's been to the clubbing been to the this been to the that Home, and, and she, she doesn't know what to do and want to and it's like, what is this? Because there was no conversation. Yeah. They talk about the house, where they're going to live. They talk about the kids they're going to have. Yeah. Talk about, you know, where they want to so they get the kids educated, but mm -hmm. never address these issues that now is invading her world. Yeah. Like, what is this? And, and, know, and, so and, and also, I remember I had a friend who said to me, she, I mean, she met this guy. They were no, were they married? I don't remember. They were engaged to be married or something. And then one day he said, Christians. Then one day he said he'd like to have anal. They were doing, they were, they were, they were getting, they are being sexual. And then she was like, you're putting it at the wrong place, wrong place. You know, she's tried to, and he's like, no, I want, that's what I want to do. She was mm -hmm. just hit with that, like, what? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And everyone should be entitled to what they want to do, but where's the conversation? But I'll tell you this too. At one point in time, yeah. I remember when we were working in the, at the Sexual Health Authority, I remember one of the issues we were having with teenage girls, two issues, girls were having lesbian relationships. Trying to, mm. preserve, trying to preserve their virginity. And they were having sexual experiences in every single holes on their body except their vagina except. to preserve wow. their sexuality. Wow. I mean every other hole. Mm. That's amazing. To preserve their sexuality. Their, their, sorry, their virginity. Wow. So, so Rekha, we, we see clearly we need, we need the conversation. We yes. need the conversation. Oh, yes. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. And, and I'm know, this that, you know what I'm looking forward to? I hope that you're able to get people on here who, who will speak. I had no idea I would have been that frank. <laughs> Thank God I never made any mistakes to say any names or anything like that. But the reason I did is because it's an important conversation to have. And you know what people need to learn to deal with? Because that's something I'm no learning to deal with separation and grief because i've never had to mm. deal with it before every other breakup or separation i had was very easy for me bye wow. you know but now i'm learning that and this person this this is only somebody i dated for like i think it was like a month or less mm. you know so i know i'm i have to be actually be teaching myself how to and recognizing that this is a grieving process don't bully yourself through it because sometimes what we do is bully ourselves through it. I have literally had the thoughts of testing out the hole to get over somebody, get under somebody else. Literally. I can't, I shocked me that I had those thoughts. Shocked me. You know, you know, you know, if you don't mind, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably blow up a little bit here. But you are a, a counselor, you are a coach. Coach. And I think I'm, that, um, I'm a trained counselor, but I don't do counseling. But I'm a coach. And, and, and you do and you do you do coaching your your, your license is, is it worldwide can any any I'm country certified international certification yes wow that is great so that's 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 something that you that um i want to kind of bring out as well which is why i'm able to, um, to openly speak about mine because when i talk with my clients i share my experiences yeah. too to let them know when when appropriate of course so they understand that you're not alone in this you know wow. You're not alone in this. And even when you go to a therapist or a coach, you are still the, the, the expert in the room because it's your life. And the coach yes. or, the, or the counselor or the therapist only knows as much as you say. Yes. As you're willing and, 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 or able to say. So, wow. so I, I, I did that just now by sharing my own story because 
I remember I was speaking to a friend of mine and because she knows me so well, she knew before me what I was feeling. And she was just like, wow, you know, because she was so worried for me. Cause she, I remember she used to be like years, like she used to be like, man, if you could just, I just want you to have this experience before you die. Like you're so amazing. You should have that experience. And she, and she used to go on and on about mm-hmm. it. I'm like, but I have loved, I still love the guys I've dated. We're really good friends. And these are people I care about and still love. And if tomorrow something happens and they need my support, I'm there because I'm that kind of chick, you know, but we have to, sometimes we find ourselves in, in, in some situations that even ourselves, we don't even know how to navigate it. At one point in the, I, cause even I, as a coach and I've studied, I've, I've, you know, I'm still right now, I started a course on um, breaking up because um, the con- I was never taught how to, right? And I, while I studied, I hadn't gone through it. So I had the theory and now I'm experiencing it. So now I need to learn how to, how to put the two together because I hadn't experienced it before. It's a terrible thing. And also, there's also, it's a lot that you go through because you also have to sit and think, okay, so if this thing happens so organically, what if this is, what if this is the one for me? And if it is the one for me, what am I supposed to divest in order to make this work then? How much am I supposed to take? You know, and you mm. go through all that in your mind. And if you are not careful, you find yourself settling for less than the best. Because you're thinking, this is so amazing, it's got to be it. You know? But the thing is, it's it when not just you are feeling it and divesting yourself. Because that's what a relationship is. It's a partnership. So you have to divest. You divest your baggage. You divest your money. You divest your heart. You're, 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 you're coming yeah. in and you're saying, these are the things I have and I'm going to put it on the table. Yes. That person's not putting their heart on the table too. If that person's not putting their troubles on the table too, because let me tell you the kind of girl I am. I don't want you at a good alone. I want you through everything. I don't care what mm. you're going through. I want to walk through that with you. I like that. I like That's that. That's the kind of person I am, right? If you're sick, is it is my responsibility to take care of you. It's my joy. Let's change that word to take care of you. I want to wipe your ass if I have to. And nobody else is going to touch you because that's, that's what I want to do. That's why I love you. Right. Mm. But sometimes those are not some of the things we think about when we think relationship. Yeah. And if someone is not willing to see you that way, then you have to think about it. And sorry. And then there's also the matter of, you know, what helped me let go. I was watching a video because it was so, I was struggling. Well, I, I'm still going through it, but I was struggling much harder than now, you know, thinking, are you supposed to fight for this? Are you not? So what do you fight for? How do you need to fight? But then there was something I was watching where I saw this couple, Maisley, it's on YouTube, and it's just the way they fight for it. They didn't even, she had just, she got divorced in a week and got remarried in a week, in that week. Wow. Divorced and married in one week. When you know, you know. We don't need to be sitting here, when you're of a certain age and you have certain responsibilities, the thing is, right, relationship is not when you're perfect and everything is set. You're supposed to do it together. Now, if we can't go through the rough patch together, if we can't fix this together, if I can't help you, and I'm not suggesting that anybody does that, what she went through, right? Mm. I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm saying for me, what is it you're trying to figure out? It's either is or isn't. So I, I don't really subscribe to the, I need to get myself there. Get yourself where? If you need to get somewhere, am I not the one who's supposed to help you get there? Am I not the one supposed to support you to get there? Why are you alone then if I am available? And if I am, so, so what I think is, is just not the right person because I believe when it's the right person, trust me, you will know. And there won't you be know. And you- As long as there's a reason for something, it will happen. If there's no reason for it, if, if there isn't for something else, then that's what else is going to happen. But I just wanted to say, what touched me in that thing that I was watching was the purpose and then I realized it's amazing to have this connection, right? It's great. It's wonderful. But it needs to be the cap on top of purpose. It's the cherry on top of purpose. 
it's not just that amazing, wonderful, and I'm telling you, I'm, there's no kiss like it in the world, right? But there has to be the foundation of purpose. And you see, it's the purpose that lets that person know if you're the one they need to build with. So you see, all I want to talk about what you're trying to figure out, if the purpose is connected, and I think in my case, if the purpose was connected and identified, then all these other excuses wouldn't come into play because you'd know you're connecting to purpose. And again, my personal views, based on the information I have at this point in time, who knows if tomorrow, the next day, or the next day, my mind will change. I don't know. All I know is that I will only be with someone who I know wants me and chooses me. And wow. we have purpose <laughs> together. So, so, so I, I know, uh, how, are we looking, how are we looking with time? That's the first question. Um, and the other question oh, okay. is... I thought you would have stopped by now. And, and uh, we, you know, we, when it comes to sex, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's an ongoing, it's like an, it's like an, an Please repeat uh, that, please repeat that so we can edit it. Because okay. I said something when it comes yeah, to sex. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I was saying, so, saying I'm that. Sorry. I'm, Before you say that, just say to me, since I'm your guest, thank you for sharing, whatever, whatever, and then go close your thing. Yes, uh, thank you for, thank you for sharing, um, for being so transparent. I think it has... It has really, really, uh, I believe, has touched many people and um, probably caught them to think about their own transparency as well. Uh, this right here, there's so much more to come and there's so much more that we can talk about as it relates to this topic, Christians and sex. Um, and, and I'm truly excited about what we're gonna see as a result um, as we bring out more aspect, aspects of it and so forth. Can I say one thing before I go? Because I think it is very important. It's so, it's so interesting. As I said, the, the topic just now I remembered. You, would you believe that this person is the person who helped me connect? I was always very spiritual and I knew God myself, you know? But it's so, and I actually think maybe that's the reason I met him. This is the person who actually got me to the place of connecting with God on, a, on the kind of level, the, the kind of depth, deeper level that I've been seeking all my life. It's it's the weirdest thing. That's amazing. That is that yeah. is that is, and, yeah. and you know, on 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 just closing out here, mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna say this, and hopefully, it can probably help somebody. That many people have had a bad outlook on sex for some reason or the other, and they have defined themselves as such. So my hope is that um, that you would not let that moment or that time, whether whether the season in your life or that moment in, in life, define you with shame and you know, and feeling less than, or feeling why, 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 but know that you are a whole being, right? Spiritual, there's a physical, there's, there's a mental, all right? There are different parts of you. So know that one area, if you like, that might have been bruised or maybe um, uh, been touched the wrong way or a way that was not to your desire, and now you have a whole uh, pers perspective on, on, on how our sexuality supposed to be harmonizing with each other and how we ought to look forward to it as something wonderful opposed to something dreadful or something that you know that you have to be scared and really think about but again folks i we welcome your emails um we're looking for your responses and like i said we're looking to have more people on our program what's the email um, different perspective. it's uh yumi radio live at gmail.com. That's a U, the letter U, me radio, M E R A D I O, L I V E, at gmail.com. So send it out to us. We're excited about it. And um, we look for the next segment to come. But for now, folks, we say bye and stay in love and stay blessed. And if you're married, have as much of it as possible. So God bless you. And never settle. No matter how great it looks, no matter how amazing it looks, no matter how much it feels, never settle. That's what I'd like to say. Thank you so much for having me, Key. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And looking forward to having us again.